when we focus on the breath, it's not so much the air coming in and out through the nose. It's the feeling of energy in the body. Some people say, where is the energy? The fact that you sense that you have a body, you sense that through the breath, through the breath energy. If you were to hold your hand out right now so that it wasn't touching anything, you'd still know that you had a hand. You feel it from within. That feeling from within, that's breath energy. And in some parts of the body there's a definite feel that it's flowing, in other parts it seems more static. In other parts it seems like there's nothing there at all. Your thigh can be missing, your shoulder can be missing. It's because you've lost lost touch with that part of the body. The other parts of the body where the energy seems to be very tight, and it's almost like there's a solid lump. So in the beginning you work around those. Find the areas of the body where you have a sense that just the sensation of having a body feels at ease. It doesn't have to be anything particularly outstanding or especially rapturous or pleasant. Simply that there's a sense of the body feels present, there's no tightness. If you want, you can start with your hands. Just consciously relax the muscles of your hands. And then slowly work your way up your arms. The muscles around the wrist, the muscles in the forearm, the muscles around the elbow, the, the upper arm, the shoulders. And then start with your toes. Relax the muscles around your toes, your feet, go up through the ankles, up through your legs, the hips, up the backbone. If you sense any tension or tightness anywhere, allow it to relax. And try to notice there may be a tendency as you breathe in to tighten up and then to stay tight as you breathe out. See if you can breathe in without tightening up at the spot where you're focused. When you've managed that, then move up the spine even further, section by section vertebrae by vertebrae if you can, all the way up through your neck and then into the skull. Think of all the muscles around your head relaxing, and that they can stay relaxed whether you're breathing in or breathing out. As you relax things in this way, you'll find that some parts of the body get a sense of fullness. Okay, allow that to be there. Protect it. How do you protect it? You don't protect it by building a shell around it. You protect it by allowing it to stay open. And the more parts of the body you can do that for, the better. The more you can connect them up, the better still. And you can check your posture. Are you leaning in one way or the other? Try to sit in a way that's erect. And if there's any tension in any part of the body that's keeping you from being erect, allow that tension to relax too. Or if it's you're going up the back, and you can do, go through the body as many times as you like. Start at the hands again, go up the arms, start at the feet again, go up the feet. When you hit the back, try to notice. Are you holding more tension in one side than the other? If you can, notice that. Try to allow it to relax. You can do the same with your legs, same with your arms. Compare them. Which side is holding more attention? Can you relax that side? And can you keep it relaxed with the in-breath, with the out-breath, so that the in-breath and out-breath make no difference there? If you feel a sense of flow, fine. If you don't feel a sense of flow, at least try to keep things open and relaxed and balanced. As I said this morning, you're trying to make a home here for the mind. And 
And the more you can get, get things settled and open like this, the easier it is for your awareness to seep down into the body. After all, when the Buddha is talking about right concentration, he's talking about a full body awareness. And where there's a sense of ease, he says you allow that to work through the body, a sense of fullness or refreshment. Let that permeate through the body. Again, you don't push it through, just allow it. And you find that the sense of the body sitting here gets a lot lighter because you're not tensing up around things so much. That makes it even more pleasant to stay right here. As for the parts of the body that you can't sense any energy in, or the energy doesn't seem to flow, or they seem to have disappeared entirely, let them be for the time being. Work on the parts that are malleable, that respond. And then when you feel well settled there, you can try to work through the other parts of the body as well. This is because the mind is less frantic right now, less impatient. You've got a sense of well-being, so you don't want to destroy it. It's when you don't have a sense of well-being that you're pushing things around inside. So be patient. And if you find that there's part of the body that's, that has disappeared, try to Notice, okay, where do you feel the parts closest to it? And ask yourself, okay, where is there any sense of any connection in there at all? It may not be where you expect, because sometimes our internal sense of the body gets very distorted. So your sense of arm, your arm may not be where your arm is. If you were to open your eyes and look at it, well, just deal with the sense on its own terms without imposing your visual image of the arm or your visual image of the leg, if that's where the problem is. Just ask yourself, where do you feel things? They may not be where you expect to feel them. But if you can base this on a sense of well-being, the work goes a lot better. It's more effective because you're not so impatient to push things around. At the same time, as you're calming the mind, you're gaining some insight into how your perception of the body is going to have an impact on how you actually feel the body. And how you can work with your perceptions. When the Buddha gives instructions on breath meditation, it's always whatever, whatever aspect he's working with, whether it's working with the body or working with your feelings or working with your mind. Sensitizing yourself to it first. What do you actually feel right here, right now? And then to what extent are you actually shaping that feeling? With the breath, one way you can test this is to try breathing in with different rhythms. Make the breath heavier or lighter, faster, slower, deeper, more shallow. And see what impact your intention has on the breath and what impact that way of breathing has on your sense of the body. And even though it may feel a little artificial, remind yourself it feels artificial only because you're not used to it, because you're already making an artifice out of your sense of the body to begin with. The mind is constantly putting things together. There's a sensation here, a sensation there, and there's some place in the, in the mind that puts them together to make sense out of them. Sometimes we make good sense, sometimes we don't make such good sense. For the purpose of concentration, the sense you want to make out of the body is that it is open and responsive. And so whatever perception helps, open up the sense of the body so that it does respond. Your sense of the body as you feel it from within feels at ease, light. Tranquil. But solid. Solid in the sense that things aren't antsy in the mind. You feel really comfortable right here. 
Okay. Try to nudge your sense of the body in that direction. This is called calming fabrication. And in calming fabrication, you've got insight and tr tranquility working together. The tranquility is in the calming, and the insight is in understanding things in terms of fabrication. And in developing concentration, you're working on seeing to what extent you can go against what the Buddha calls those three perceptions. The perception of inconstancy, stress, and not self. The Buddha is not asking you to say, gee, everything in the world is inconstant, I accept that, everything, everything fabricated is stressful, everything is not self. That's not what he's asking you. He's not asking for your allegiance to, some, to sign up on some program. It's more to see these perceptions in a way that's useful. And the best way to understand them is first try to make things as constant and easeful and as under control as you can inside. Again, control here, not in the sense of being a control freak or a micromanager, but learning what actually works, what perceptions help with getting the breath more nourishing, what help perceptions help per the breath permeate throughout the body so everything feels connected and everything feels coordinated. Work on those perceptions because you want to deal with perceptions and ultimately see to what extent how far can you make it constant, easeful, and under your control. And then you run up against the areas where you can't. And that's where the insight's going to come. At that boundary line. It's not going to come just by reading in books and saying, Oh, I understand that this is inconstant and stressful, not self. It comes from pushing against that and seeing where you actually do run into what's inconstant, stressful, and not self. And this will come in stages. The important thing is that for the time being you work on this, being with the breath, being with the body, having a sense that the mind and the body fit together snugly and with a sense of ease. Because when the mind has this sense of ease, it can look at things with a lot more dispassion, a lot more objectivity. If everything in the body feels frazzled, your thoughts are going to get frazzled too. And if you can't feed on a sense of well-being here, you're going to start feeding on things, thoughts of revenge, thoughts of jealousy, thoughts of whatever that present themselves to the mind. But the better, better fed your mind is, the less likely it is to want to go for poison. It's when we're hungry. We get to the point where we want to stuff anything at all into the mouth just to fill up the stomach. That's when you start eating poison. And unskillful mind states suddenly seem attractive and you feed on them. And that aggravates things even more. So one of the purposes of breath meditation is to soothe things. The Buddha's analogy is he said when there are unskillful states in the mind, working with the breath, soothing the body with the breath, it's like the first rains after the hot season. Have you ever been in India? At the end of the hot season, everything is really dusty. But when the first rains come, it clears everything, out, all that dust out of the air. And it's the same with the breath. When the breath feels good and you're with a sense of ease and refreshment, and you allow it to percolate through the body. Then whatever unskillful notions or impulses that the mind might normally feed on just get washed out of the mind like so much dust. When you're in this state, secure, at ease, 
you look at the petty concerns you have from the day and you actually see them as petty. They seem a lot smaller from this perspective than they do when you're in the midst of them. This allows you to step back and have some freedom from those things. So as you're feeding your sense of well-being inside the body, and your sense of the breath, you're also contributing to the well-being of people around you. Because your mind is stirring up a lot less dust. You're not poisoning yourself. And when you're not poisoning yourself, you're not a burden on other people. So take some time to be with the breath, to get to know the breath inside. It's there. It's simply that we often look past it. But if you can step back and give it some space, you find that it's really rewarding.